It's time now for the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington, pastor of the World's Church of the Living God, located at 2110 Glass Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, here's Pastor Alan Harrington. He will never Forsake you, even though he knows everything there is to know about you. I recommend Jesus. But I pray that God will bless constantly the minds of his people. That he will, and, and saints, we got to do it. We have to learn to come together in, in faith and prayer. We have to learn, no matter what, to be in, to be in one accord. Yes, sir. To be in one accord, one mind, having that same hope. Psalms 133 says, Behold what? How good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. That's a good thing. That's a blessed thing. Just like the ointment that ran down upon the beard. A, there's a special anointing on people who are united in Christ. A special, and those people People who know God don't hate. People who know God do not sow seeds of discord. Man, sir. No. Not people who know God. People who are deceived might do that. But not people who know God. This power, the anointing of God rests on people who live and dwell in one mind, one accord. They are unified yes. by God's spirit, by God's grace. That's why Jesus told us people, so if you ever 
He's letting them know if you ever feel the need, you start thinking that you need God in your life. And you want to enter into, into some kind of church, synagogue, what, whatever it is, he, he warned them not to go into the broad road because the broad road of religion leads to where? Jesus said it. We, we, we're not going to read all the scriptures. You can look them up. But straight and narrow is the way that leads to life. It's straight and narrow because it's strictly word. And only a few find it. Only a few. People think today that they can play with God and make God be who they want, who they feel like he ought to be. Well, if that's the case, they're God. And he's, he's their servant, not their God. So it's not like that. This world has messed up so bad. And that's why Jesus made it only a few are going to find it. And then he warned it in St. Matthew 24 when the disciples were asking about it. What's going to be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? The first thing he said was don't let anybody deceive you. Amen. Deception is rampant. Yes, don't let, what is deception? To lie, right. to trick right. you. Right. Some people even present a bit of truth, yes, sir. twist it to deceive you. Yes, sir. That's, that's the devil's job. Yes, that's Satan's job. Yes, sir. That's what he does. Jesus said it. Don't take heed that no man deceive you. Why? He said, because men are going to come in my name. Men are going to come talk about me. Preaching about me and shall deceive many. Yes, sir. Oh, God. People better pray to God, give them. You better, first of all, you can't really have spiritual discernment without having that spirit of God in you in the first place. That, I recommend Jesus. That, that's, that's all we have to offer. It's Jesus. And folks are trying to turn people away from Jesus. That is crazy. So if that's the case, if Jesus ain't who he is, who he said he was, who God said he was, ain't nobody saved. So what are you talking about? Be careful, saints. Satan is going about as a roaring lion. He's doing it. He's doing it and deceiving people. So, be settled. I'm going to read this, just one, where you at, in Acts. What you got? Acts, the fourth chapter. Amen. I thank God for Jesus. Yes, sir. yes I, I know who saved me. Yes, Praise God Almighty. Starting with the 32nd verse, Acts 4, 32. Okay. And the multitude of them that believed. Those that believed now. See, now, everybody in the multitude didn't believe. You got that right here. It's, gonna, it's, gonna, it's, it's, it's here. It's everywhere. Read Psalms, uh, no, Job, the first chapter. I believe when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Yes, Who came? Satan came. See, don't, don't think everybody talk about Jesus is saved. Everybody comes to church in here every Sunday is saved. So the multitude of them that believed, and this is what I pray for, God bless and strengthen the believers. I pray that God will continue to bless the multitude of those who believe. That you will give them the desires of their heart. That you lead them in your way of righteousness. I pray for that. Bless them, oh God. Amen. Open doors Amen. for them. Yes, sir. Lead them to the door. Open their eyes so they can see. Yes, sir. I pray for God's people. What, whatever it is, whatever it is a person is, they should be that. Yes, no matter what it is. 
be that. No matter who it is, what it, be it. But don't be a deceiver. You're digging yourself a hole. Praise God. The multitude of those saints of God in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, the Acts of the early church, that believed were what now? Were of one heart. Yes. And of one soul. Wow, how could that be? They, they weren't the same person. They, they, they had different minds. They had different personalities. They liked different things. Some like collard greens, some like okra. I don't know, you know? Some favorite color might have been blue, some black. I don't, I don't know. But with all their differences in life, when it came to God's word, when it comes to Jesus, when it came to what they believed, they were solid as a rock. Amen. And they were together. Yes, and Satan hated it. Yes, sir. Yes. Because the anointing of, of God rested on those people. Amen. They were one heart, one soul, and something happened. They gave, they blessed, they helped each other. Nobody lacked they didn't say, well, this is my stuff. No, they shared everything. They just, God just poured out his spirit of giving on them. So that nobody went without. No, nobody had to sleep on the streets. They were there. They had all things coming. So this happened. And with that kind of spiritual strength, support, with that kind of faith, The Bible says, read it, read the next scripture. And with great power gave the apostles witness yes. of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, and great grace was upon them all. Great grace. Yes, sir. If you don't want that, I don't know what's wrong with you. And people need to see the power of God in their life. Everything about your life today hinges on... is. It, it's all because of the death and burial, of course, but the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything about your life is because of his life. Yes, sir. He rose. Yes, sir. He's alive today. Yes, sir. He died on Calvary. And if you feel empty, if you feel that old thing, that old income, if you know that something is missing, if you know you're incomplete, it's Jesus. That's who you're lacking. I'm not looking for any other God. I'm not looking for any other Savior. If you are, that means that you have not met a Savior. You've not met a Savior. If you are thirsting for some other kind of knowledge, you've not met Jesus. Come on now. Amen. You don't have to agree with me. It's the truth. He said it. In St. John 4th chapter, the water that I give says so you, you never thirst. He said that. Praise God Almighty. And Hebrews, tell, the Bible said in, in Hebrews how that this great grace was on them so powerfully that God, do you know that we, we testify about the goodness of God, the good things that God has done. He's blessed us. He's, he's saved me, first of all. He blessed my life. He healed my body. God testified of his people. Yes, sir. <laughs> he testified that these people are mine yes, with miracles and power and signs and, and wonders. And I'm looking to see that. Amen. God loves his people. Yes, there is no yes, doubt about that. Yes, but I know the, the Jews, since they, they didn't believe the Hebrews, what was, give me one of the reasons, why, why did they... 40 years in the wilderness. Do you know that God let those people, he said, I'm going to let, let them wander. To every one of those that didn't believe and took on an evil report and brought back trouble to the camp, I'm going I'm I'm to let them wander in the wilderness till that generation dies. Yes, till they all die out. Let's book. God something else. See, now God is love. He loves his people. God is also a judge. God is the father. God is the king 
over the kingdom of God, over everything. He is alone, the possessor of heaven and earth. Amen. God is. Amen. Not me, not nobody else. And God is not playing with the, he, he's, he's showing mercy, but he's not, he's, not, he's not playing with people, coddling people. God does not change his word. For me, nobody. God will have mercy. Do you know God will have mercy on you and you still got to pay for your sin? Yes, sir. Man, yes, sir. He forgives you. Still. Nathan the prophet told David, okay, David, when, when he had Uriah killed, he, he, he took the man's wife, she got pregnant, Bathsheba, that first child had died. Yes, sir. He said, he told, yeah, he said you, say, you, no, that child ain't going to live. No, not under that, those circumstances. God, and God took the child's life. Even though David fasted and prayed. See, you can do a lot of stuff for no, for, in vain. Fasting and prayed. Oh, God, please have mercy. Hmm. No. But later, I mean, he had more sons. and had more, more sons by other wives, too. But he had more sons by, by, by Sheba. One that we all know about is Solomon. Became king in David's stead. He was with his father, knew his father, and knew God. He loved God. Nathan told him, no, uh -uh. Say, God has put away your sin. Nevertheless, in so many words, you're going to see the effects of what you did, though. <laughs> and, and that's where it happens. It happens. Sometimes God can, he, he, he can sort of, he can sort of get you through. You know, might not make it as severe. He'll forgive. But things have consequences. God is nothing and nobody to be played with. Amen. Believe me. Amen. Don't play with God. Mm -mm, he, he, he is the, he, God. Not, he is a consuming fire. Yes, God is. So the Bible speaks of how God testified of his people with signs and what. See, God's amazing. And all he wants us to do is to love him and trust him. That's all. Live, believe him. If we love God and trust him, we'll obey him. We'll, 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 we'll act right. We'll do the right thing. We'll, if, if, if we believe God and we love him, we'll love one another. You find people that don't love, they don't know God. That's the Bible. That's, you've heard it a hundred times. So being in one accord, in one mind, is important. So in Ephesians, let's, let's read this quickly because I want to talk about Jesus. So everything's about Jesus, folks. Everything is about Jesus. And Satan knows it. That's why sometimes when, when Jesus approached people that were possessed with demons. And demon possession is real, by the way, the Bible speaks for it. Jesus dealt with demon possession. Jesus called demons out of people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's why as he approached some who were possessed, they would say, what, 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 why are you coming to mess with us, Jesus? Son of God, you come to torment us before time? They knew that Jesus was the anointed, he was the Christ, the, the walking word of God, Amen. incarnated in flesh. Yes, he knew. Who else could talk to the winds and sea? It, it, we, we like to peace be still. Who could say that? Yes, sir. So much power. Yes, even disciples got scared. What kind of man is this? Yes, that even the winds and sea obey him. It's Jesus. Praise God. I thank God for Jesus. I do. You better know him. <laughs> you better know him. The sweet lamb of God. You better know him. Don't just get your name on the roll book. Don't just get, get people accustomed to you like a church member. No, you want to know Jesus. You want to, if, if, maybe you have already. But you want to make, you want to know that you know that you know that your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
in heaven, in God's book, before the foundation of the world. That's when it all happens. See, don't play with God. People, and people, people get me messing with God and talking about Jesus and all of a sudden Jesus ain't good enough. Satan's on his job. God's people, God's now, not, not everybody, but God's people, the multitude of those who believe. He said this. He, he said that many are going to come in that day. In the, in the day of judgment. Judgment day. Many are going to come in that day, saith the Lord. Said Jesus himself. And say, Lord, Lord. I prophesied in your name. I preached the word. I sung in the choir. I was baptized five times. I, Lord, you know. And after they do all that crying and explaining to Jesus how saved they were, that's going to be a rough day, folks. That's why don't, don't play with, don't let people play with your mind. People will go to hell for a friend, not me. Because the person trying to take you there is not a friend. To be in hell forever because of something you think is a relationship. Come on now. Just, All right. Why do you think Jesus said, boy, I tell you, we could talk about Jesus all day long. Yes, sir. He, he said it, it would have been better for them to enter in, in, into life halt and maimed without a limb, without anything, than to enter into hell forever. What was he talking about? That thing that you value more, yes, more than God, it'd be better for you to live life without them. Yes, live your life for Jesus. Live your eternal life for Jesus and go to paradise with him when time comes yes, than to keep that friend and go to hell. Amen. That's in the Bible. Where, where it talks about, it says it's better for you to, if your hand offend you, cut it off. I wasn't talking about just literally cutting your hand off. What can be closer to you than, than, than a relative or a friend or a, 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 a wife or a husband? He's talking about that kind of thing. Something that offends you, cause you to stumble and disobey God, and you fool enough to sit up and listen to it. Looking for life satisfaction in all the wrong places. Only person who can satisfy your soul is Jesus. That's it. He's the only person who can save it. That's why he came here. Yes, sir. It's letting you know how important it is that you are dedicated to Christ, that your heart, your mind, everything about you belongs to God, and you will allow no interference. That's what that is. That's, that's book. See, people can't live like that. There's a reason for that. See, there's a reason why they cannot. Whew, boy. Got to be strong, saints. Paul wrote to his, his son in the gospel, Brother Timothy, to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, we're not to be wimpy. To be humble before God doesn't mean you have to bow down before people. That does not mean that. To, be, to, to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God doesn't mean that you have to listen to garbage just spews out of the mouth of folks. Amen. And I just, I'm just being nice to them. No, you're not. Amen. You're being a trash dump. Amen. That script in this Bible, especially anybody who, who doesn't bring the doctrine of Jesus Christ to you, yes, the Bible tells you straight up how to handle it. Yes, you don't even invite them folks into your home, Amen. let alone offer them your ear. That's, that's the Bible. Yes, sir. So if you do, you're just as big a sinner as they are. You're a partaker of that person's evil deeds. Yes, sir. Amen. Why? Yes, sir. Because you're allowing them to spread poison. Yes, sir. Amen. This, this is some heavy metal. See, all this, this, this whole book ain't, ain't just love you, love you, love you. Praise the Lord. Love you. And God loves you too. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Come on up. God's got a blessing for everybody today. Well, he does. But God's not always like that. You're blessed, especially when you obey God and you meet the conditions of promises that he's made. Yes, sir. Yes, 
You'll get that. Bl- it's coming. Yes, sir. Amen. God bless, no doubt. God will keep his word. Yes, sir. It's impossible for him to lie. Amen. But see, we want to work all around obeying God. We want to work all around being dedicated, being faithful to God. We want to work all, all around being, being soldiers. We say it, you know, when it's, when it's convenient because it sounds pretty. I'm a soldier of the Lord. Praise the Lord. We, we can say it. But our lives show otherwise. Amen. Come on now. Yes, so God is looking for people. God's called out of people. Called them out of darkness, out of sin. Called them into his marvelous light. Called them who were once separated, separated, alienated from God. Called them into relationship with the Father to know him, to love him, to obey him, to obey God. It's important. One way or another, we're all going to leave here. We're going to leave here. One way or another, everybody is going to spend eternity somewhere. And the Lord, read St. Saint Matthew 721. Just read that. You're, he, he's, he's having no excuses about how faithful we were or what we did. Uh, I, I was going to do it, but I, I meant just stuff. And somebody else tell me that after they do all that crying and begging and pleading and, and making Jesus understand just how saved they were, what was it he had to say? Somebody else said, I, I, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Everything you did was sin. It was without me. Everything. You're preaching everything. Church going all everything. So you, that's, I wasn't in that. So a person would be just literally crazy to let somebody play with their minds, their soul. Ain't no way. No way. Not me. Uh, Ephesians, third mm-hmm. chapter, 14th verse. 14th verse. All right. Make sure everybody's got it. Yes, sir. God's going to bless his people for sure. Yes, sir. God is going to continue to raise his people. I'm going to strengthen you. Open doors for you and give you sight. Open your eyes where you can see. Where you'll see. You've been saved. You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee 37401. That's Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.